Now let's talk details of the Zodiac Super Seawolf Automatic. I'll place the dimensions here, the retail price, the specifications on the screen. I like the proportions here. And the more time I've spent with this Zodiac, filming this, getting wrist shots, looking at this in various lighting situations, the more I've appreciated the execution, the fun color scheme. And you know what? The case kind of reminds me of the Zin 104, especially from side profile. The lugs seem a little bit longer, but I like that case design. I like the way this wears on wrist. I like the comfort factor. And then pairing that fit, pairing those proportions with the fun colors, the applied markers, the, the different fonts of the dial from the very cursive and fancy super sea wolf to kind of the mid-century modern automatic and water resistance designation. I think overall, this is a very attractive watch. And you know what? I'm a little bit bummed that I have not featured Zodiac much in the past couple years. I did review a Seawolf, I don't know, maybe four years ago now, but you know what? This has been great to spend some time with, and I like a lot of the features here. So let me show you the bezel action and uh, let you guys know that this is a sapphire crystal on the bezel. This is 120 click unidirectional rotating action. There's an off-white base color here with black indexing and orange highlights. It's not loomed and the covering is sapphire, so it's gonna be very scratch resistant and we'll have some nice color play, light play, reflection play, depending on the light situation that you're in. And as you guys can see, the action is pleasant. There is a touch of back play, but certainly nothing inappropriate for this price point. And overall, I really like that. Now let's go to the other tactile element of the watch, and that's the crown at the three o'clock position. It's a screw down crown. The watch does carry 200 meters of water resistance, but I have to say the winding action is just not quite as pleasant as what I've experienced with ETA, with Solita. So I'd say this is just a step below that, but certainly not a deal breaker in my, uh, you know, in my opinion. And speaking of the movement, this carries the STP 3-13 movement. STP stands for Swiss Technology Production. It's an arm of the Fossil Group. Now the Fossil Group acquired Zodiac, so technically you could say this is an in-house movement, but it would be an in-house movement to the same degree that a coaxial caliber from Omega would be considered an in-house movement, right? It's made by Swatch. And the same type of relationship is here with this STP and this Zodiac. Now, this essentially is a clone of the Salita SW200, which is a clone of the ETA 2824. However, this STP is regulated to tighter tolerances and will have very sharp finishing. It will have blued screws, thermally blued screws, and then it will also have a swan neck regulator, which is very uncommon at this price point of around $1,000. So I like that. The only thing that I'm not super excited about is the fact that we have a closed case back. And that's nothing against the design here, the execution, the signature, you know, the Zodiac logo in the center in that bead blasted sunken area. I just kind of want to see that swan neck regulator that nice finishing, you know what? That is adding the value here at this price point. And the fact that I can't see it is just a little bit disappointing as a watch enthusiast. Now let's go in on the dial and take a look at some dial details. I love the pop of color on the index ring, that orange index ring and how that works with the orange minute hand. I like the applied badge just below the 12 o'clock marker. And the applied, uh, the applied markers look very sharp. I don't see anything wrong with the printing. I don't see dust or particulates in the dial. And overall, the date placement relative to the size of the dial, I think everything looks proportional. Everything looks sharp. And the squared off hands is kind of a fun element of this watch. So I think it's attractive. I think it's well done. I do like the movement. Let's talk about the fit here. My wrists are 7.25 inches in circumference, and this does wear like a true 40, not like the larger maxi case 40 millimeter Submariner that I wear frequently. This has a more comfortable fit. The lugs really kind of arc down, and this Tropic strap is very supple, very soft, easy 
uh, to conform around your wrist. It's not stiff. It's not uncomfortable. I think actually it's, it's one of the highlights of this piece. And I've heard great things about the bracelet option, the Jubilee bracelet option. Unfortunately, I don't have one of those to pair with this, but I think it would look very attractive. Uh, just overall, I like the strap here. I like the versatility. I like the custom buckle, the fit, the venting here of the rubber. Overall, I, I don't have very many negative elements to talk about here. And not that I'm trying to search for negative elements to talk about, but you know what? I don't want to come across as overly positive. I want to give this watch a fair shake for those of you shopping this and maybe putting it up against an Oris or a Manta or a Zen, you know, something else around this price point. I want you to have some good information. So any negative elements, I think the loom could be better. It's not the best. Certainly if you buy a Seiko, the Seiko is going to beat the pants off most of its competitors. And that's no different here with the Zodiac Super Seawolf. And then depending on the version that you get, I don't know that this is well suited to be an everyday driver in this color combination. The watermelon version looked really fun. But I think if I wanted to buy an everyday watch, a daily driver, I'd want something just a tad more conservative, as boring as that sounds. But if you want kind of an accent watch, a fun, colorful watch to mix it up, you know, on occasion throughout the week, spice up your rotation, I think this is one you should take a look at. Now, let's let's conclude this presentation with a question, guys. Would you be willing to sacrifice 100 meters of water resistance with this model to get an open case back to where you can see that swan neck regulator and the nice finishing of the STP 3-13 movement? Or would you rather have the 200 meters as this is shown here in front of the camera? I'd be interested to hear your take. Let's do a little bit of market research and then I'll also send this video to Zodiac and, and invite them to look through the comments section to see how the watch enthusiast community is receiving this value-packed Super Seawolf with fun heritage and nice details. A lot of the details that we watch enthusiasts like to look for when we're searching for you know, a new watch to buy. So reach out with questions, guys. Thanks for taking the time to watch this review. Let me know if I missed something. I'm happy to try to elaborate on any particular point that I didn't convey very clearly. I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.